So, um, ladies and gentlemen, when graphing or solving and graphing compound inequalities, um, basically for an OR, they're going to be very simple. All right, and I think you guys will like the OR. The ANDs are going to be a little bit more difficult, and I'll talk about those after this. Um, but when solving an absolute value inequality, the main important thing you guys see the difference is not only do we have one inequality, but now we have two, and then we have this um, connector statement, which is OR. All right, and the best way I like to think of OR. This is not working out very good. I'm just saying, it's not going to be pretty coming up. So when we're looking into OR, again, think about what OR represents. And the best way I like to expect about it is I said, hey, guys, during open house, if you or your parent comes into open house, I'll give you extra credit. So if you show up at open house, you get credit, extra credit, right? If your parent shows up to open house, you still get extra credit. And if both of you walk into the door, you still get extra credit. So OR is what we call inclusive. It means one or the other, or both, all right? So when solving a compound inequality, basically the only difference is, guys, we have two inequalities and this connector. This is going to help us with our graph. So what we're going to do is just solve each one individually. So the first one, I'll add 7. Just use my same operations. 3x is less than or equal to 12. Then I divide by 3, and x is less than or equal to a positive 4, right? That's kind of like going back to one variable inequalities. Then over here, to solve this, all I need to do is divide by negative 2. So I divide by negative 2, and I have x. Remember, when you divide or multiply by a negative number, you have to flip the sign. A negative 10 divided by negative 2 is a positive 5. Now you guys can see I have two inequalities. Now remember, when we graph just one variable inequalities, we just graphed you know, one little graph on the number line. Well, now we have two of them. And as long as you have a point that's true for one of them, you're going to want to include both of these on the graph. So what I'm simply going to do is create a number line. And let's just have here's 5, 6, 7, 8, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. So now all I'm simply going to do is graph both of these on the same number line. So in graphing x is greater than or equal to 5, again, you make a point at 5. And x is less than or equal to 4, you make a point at 4. Now, is this a closed or an open dot? Closed, because it's greater than or equal to. So therefore, Sinan, I'm going to fill in this closed dot. Now, again, a lot of the way to graph it, the way I, I mean, there's a couple different ways. You can use test points, which I showed you guys, or it's a little bit more tedious. A lot of times, I just like to say this aloud. x is greater than or equal to. So to the right or to the left are values that are greater than 5. To the right, right? Or, and you can just test it. Test the number 6. Is 6 greater than or equal to 5? Yeah, that's true. So you shade to the right. Now we go to 4. Is 4 closed or open? Closed, because again, it's equal to. And then just choose a test point or just say, well, what numbers are less than 4? That's going to be to the left. But let's just pick a point. 2 is less than or equal to 3. That's true. So you shade to the left. Oh, I'm sorry. So that's closed, right? So therefore, your graph is going to include both of these graphs on the same number line. All right? Don't graph them separately. You've got to graph them on the same number line. So when you're graphing compound inequalities, you guys want to make sure that you have both of them graphed on the same